The final speakers for today are Jess Butler and Maggie Crawley of OSM US, and they will be presenting about their <clears throat> they will be presenting about their efforts to liaise with uh, government authorities in the US about uh, their MAP efforts. Welcome. Thank you. Do, 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 do. And thank you for sticking around, uh, Maggie Colley. Um, and it's great to see so many familiar faces. This is Jess Bueller. Um, and we do realize that we are the last step between you and wine. So we will be as succinct as we can um, and try to tell you everything so you don't have to ask too many questions. Um, so what we're here to talk about this afternoon is really the evolution of a project OpenStreetMap US is working on called Public Domain Map. And like many stories in the open community, it's really a story about collaboration. We are talking about a tool, but the very beginning of this just started with a conversation. Um, so a little background. The catalyst for this project, um, I became the interim executive director for OpenStreetMap US in end of April of 2019. Uh, before that, I had been on the board in a volunteer role and didn't quite know what I was stepping into, but said, sure, what the heck, I'll give it a try. So a couple weeks later, I get an email from a geographer at the US Department of Transportation asking me how we can collaborate. <laughs> Great, all right, here we go. I don't know anything about the US Department of Transportation except that I use public transit. Uh, let's have lunch. <laughs> so I met with a group of geographers from the US DOT um, and they were very interested in figuring out how we could best collaborate around different open data sets, OpenStreetMap and all of their open federal data. So we had lunch. Thank you very much. Very nice to meet you. I went back to the board and I said, all right, what do we do next? Um, so one, one of the board members, I'm not sure he's here, had a great idea. And we had a panel at, um, at the State of the Map US in 2019. Uh, we talked about all kinds of things. Um, do, 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 I skipped ahead. <laughs> this was the list for the panelists, and I did not envy them. <laughs> um, we started talking about how we navigate the, the OpenStreetMap license as a public domain. Um, can authoritativeness and crowdsourcing even be in the same room? Um, uh, could OpenStreetMap potentially be the uniter of all of these disparate government data sources? Um, if anyone's familiar with the, at least the US federal government, I have a slide here in a few minutes. It's very large. <laughs> Um, what would a U.S. collaboration look like? Do we have the bandwidth and do we want to step into that room? And also, you know, is it already happening? I know there's a lot of success stories around the world, but we're trying to figure out those case studies and see does anything that's happened in the rest of the world apply to what we might want to do in collaboration in the U.S.? As you can imagine, an hour was not enough for those topics. <laughs> so. Um, I reached out to the panel a couple months later and I said, what would you think about creating a working group? Um, so the OpenStreetMap US government committee was born. Our first meeting was in August of 2020 with 15 members. And, you know, I kind of consider that a win until I looked at this chart. Um, 15 is great, but these are all the agencies in the federal government. And it's quite unwieldy. And they each have their own data sets, their own geospatial data. And also many of them have their own way of doing things, different standards, different ways of ingesting data. Uh, is it a geodatabase or are they still using shapefiles? Um, so even down to the data parts, um, it's a very different conversation to have. And I didn't quite know what door I was opening. <laughs> but today, um, we, keep, we keep opening the doors and we have 60 members on this working group all interested in talking about how OpenStreetMap could, could positively influence the public data in the United States. Here's just some of the agencies. You can see on the list, we have US federal agencies, but also it's growing to represent states and local governments um, and even some, some NGOs. 
What became very clear from the beginning is that not everybody understands OpenStreetMap. Can you believe it? <laughs> so those first, the first year of meetings, we met monthly. To their credit, hey, everybody that's out there, maybe on the committee, thank you for coming. I forgot this is virtual. Um, how do we develop a shared understanding of how both sides of this data worlds work? Uh, so I started inviting folks from the OpenStreetMap community to come to our monthly meetings and talk about what they work on. So we had an ID editor demo, just demo tasking manager. Um, Yoast came and talked about Map Complete, and that was really a positive influence. Um, so we started doing these educational sessions and just making sure we were all starting to speak the same language. Because I, I also didn't understand the way the federal government data sets work. They use a lot of acronyms. It's very organized and it's taken me actually the last two years to really finally start to understand how that works. So I can understand from their perspective, OpenStreetMap is also very difficult to walk into. But the shared tenet there was that we all recognize the value of open, open community, open data. Um, and that was something that was really inspiring for me to keep doing this work with the federal government. How do we make open the best? You know, is it is it the open public data? Is it is it OpenStreetMap or can it be both? Um, so that's kind of where we started. And because it was more of a formal committee with the federal government, we created a charter, we built a mission, and we actually set out with um, a charter document with some objectives. The first was to foster awareness of OpenStreetMap within all of these federal agencies. So since that time, I've given talks, a lot of them virtually, so I didn't really see anyone in the room, to the FAA, the FRA, the USGS, all the alphabet soup of those agencies, just to say, hey, this is what OpenStreetMap is, this is what our community looks like, and this is kind of how things work, um, in addition to those working group meetings. The license is also very confusing to many people. I am not a licensed lawyer, so we, we won't go into that too much here, but it took me a while to understand how this could work too and how we could respect and support both the public domain needs and the ODBL needs to protect both communities. Um, like I said, the language translation was also a learning curve. You know, what are we all talking about here? Can we can we talk the same language? Um, another large thing for the, for the federal government in the US is the authoritative sources. Jess is going to talk about this a little bit more, but um, there's a lot of requirements around quality checks, and um, you hear the word authoritative a lot. <laughs> and then the final thing that, that is the catalyst for this talk is exploring that data exchange. Um, there's a lot of amazing data in OpenStreetMap, but also the federal government has an incredible data sets as well. Um, I think if anybody saw Martine's talk yesterday, there's also a lot of errors in both that we could potentially collaborate to fix. Um, so, I mean, the idea there was to, okay, how do we start? This is a giant, how do you, how do you eat a whale, right? A bite at a time. <laughs> but, you know, we, we started small and we went slowly and we started to think about what data set do we start with? I mean, is it crosswalks? Is it, you know, traffic lights, what what will have what can we use to test this this collaboration out that won't break everything? <laughs> so you know it's been a, a long process, but someone from the Federal Railroad Administration happened to be in our meetings and they brought up the fact that they really needed to understand uh, railroad tunnels and where they exactly were within Colorado. We chose Colorado. So we had this data need. In the United States, we also have an amazing railroad mapping community. So we had that piece. And then we had the user agency ready to, to take the spaghetti and throw it against the wall with us and try this out. Um, so we, we invited all these folks into that working group and um, started the journey with, with what we're calling public domain map. Over to Jess. And this is where I come in. So we've been working on this for two years now, um, and we still consider it phase one. This is still very exploratory. As Maggie said, we are starting slow so that we can do things right, and we're also learning a lot through this process. Um, I came into this um, about a year ago, and I'm just a very small part of this work. There are a lot of people who are dedicating time to this. These were just 
people's photos I could find online. <laughs> um, there are a lot of people who are working on this that are not shown here, but that's both from the government side and um, the mapping community working together um, on, on this tool set making this happen. So setting up what we're calling public domain map, um, we had really four main goals. And these a lot of these align with what Maggie was just talking about, especially the first two here. Um, trying to figure out a way we can um, work to close these data gaps between the US data sets and OpenStreetMap, make these work together, not necessarily a fluid stream between them, but make it so that they can talk together and these different users can work with each data set better. Um, the two on the bottom, um, these are, um, I'll talk about these in a lot more detail in this presentation, because these are really the components that are shaping the decisions um, on this project and um, a lot of the workflows that we're going through. And so that's, uh, that's the avenue for making sure this data meets quality standards and authoritative data standards for the federal government. Um, but also there's this big thing with licenses. So we are working with both public domain license and ODBL. Um, so to some, this is a daunting piece of this and to others, it's, it's fun. So that's what we're, that's what we're working with. Um, so take a step back um, and looking at these licenses. So in the US federal space, um, US government data uh, and materials are intended to be published in the public domain. Uh, there are some exceptions, but this is generally the standard and has been the case since more or less uh, 1902, 1909, I forget the year, um, but well over 100 years, this has been the standard. And that's really great to have this baseline infrastructure uh, for a government that leans towards open government and open data. It's not perfect, uh, but there is that nature um, already in the government system. This does not mean, however, um, that it, it's set up for um, citizen contributions and crowdsourcing. Uh, this has been in the making for decades. A lot of agencies um, have been working in this, working to integrate crowdsourcing, um, but there are a lot of steps involved. And one piece is that authoritative review. When you pull in crowdsourcing and citizen data, you need to make sure that it meets the, sta the standards of um, these agencies who have to own this data um, and publish it, and it has to be it has to be validated and meet those quality checks. And so, especially in the geospatial space, agencies have been working on developing these crowdsourcing models. Uh, a great example is the U.S. Geological Service, who uh, has been looking at OpenStreetMap as a model for this for well over a decade um, for integrating crowdsourcing and scaling volunteers. Uh, and that actually led to a tool many of you might already know, and that's National Influence from OpenStreetMap. It has um, components built into the structure. The um, two-step validation process is familiar from the tasking manual. They've been able to really solve that challenge of the authoritative review and complete this workflow. It's a great example of being able to have the crowdsource data, have that reviewed by agencies that need it, and get that into the public domain as a government data set. If this workflow is starting to look familiar to you, it's because it's very similar to ours. Um, and that's um, where we start to see some of these challenges. Um, these, this workflow is great. But what we're seeing is parallel work streams here. You have two different groups of volunteers. You have different tool sets that are being maintained separately, different resources required, and ultimately two different data sets when we're essentially trying to achieve the same thing. Um, so we can bring in government data into public domain, and that has been done. It's brought in. Um, but the other direction is where things get a little tricky. Um, 
And that's circling back to these licenses. So government data being in the public domain um, and not having the same attribution and copyright um, structure, it can go into open or ODBL, um, but going the other way around is a lot more challenging. And I'm not gonna go into that today because plenty of other people have. Um, a lot of people have dove into um, and trying to explore how do we work with public domain map and open street map. Um, there's a lot of great examples on, um, on user diaries. Um, I love this wiki page. I highly recommend checking it out. It's the most concise wiki, wi OSM wiki page I've ever found and it really explains the challenge that we're working with. Um, but essentially, we've been noodling on this for quite some time and trying to figure out, could we make this work? Do we understand the license properly? Um, and bringing a lot of people into this space, we ultimately just decided this, it's not, um, the TLDR is that it's not going to work for us. Getting the OpenStreetMap data back up into the public domain directly for the governments to use um, because of these licensing differences, this is not where we should be spending our time trying to find a solution. So instead, we're taking a different approach. And like I said, this is an exploration. We're trying to see what's, what's gonna work. We wanna take this workflow and maybe turn it into something that looks a little bit more like this. So using the same, using the same pool of volunteers working in the same tool sets, and that data then goes to the separate databases. And the way we're focusing on that or the approach we're taking is making public domain the front end of that. So having the mapping and the validation um, start in the public domain, that way it can go into OpenStreetMap and it can go into the government data sets without having to deal with that trouble of getting those licenses to talk to each other. So what we are doing to make this work, um, so we have, um, amazing developers working on this, uh, Jim and Quincy, um, among others who've been uh, working to figure this out. So we are working with ID Editor, modifying the stack. Um, we're not trying to create a new tool here. Uh, really, we're just rearranging the furniture to make this work for the license. Um, and so modifying ID Editor, scraping out uh, the data sets that are not in the public domain and only having imagery um, and government data sets um, in the tool so that any edits are made are in the public domain from the start. And that data that is mapped and validated is then on its own separate server that is in the public domain. And then this whole thing can sit within the tasking manager, which is a very familiar tool that we can get OSM mappers and others um, from these different federal crowdsourcing um, initiatives to work with so that we're using familiar tools for the mapping and the validation. So how we're envisioning this workflow, uh, and it's something that we're working on frequently, but this is, this is how we're seeing it right now is that federal agencies will be able to identify data gaps or data needs that they have and set up a project in the tasking manager using their own data. So with the pilot project that Maggie introduced, the Federal Railroad Administration um, is setting up tasks in the project manager using their railroad line data. And this looks very familiar. Um, of the public domain map, um, it's IDF. You see here is public domain. Yeah, it map the data that could be National Map Corps volunteers, it could be OSM US volunteers, it could be um, really anyone. And they're editing directly on that federal data set here. So in this case, mapping the railroad um, lines to add those tunnels for the FRA. Finally, that authoritative review process. The task can be the ones um, specifically identified to be doing the validation and can make sure that the data is to their standards in the process. And again, this looks very familiar if you've ever used a tasking manager. Yeah, this is part of the process that a lot of people already know and understand. 
So we're just using the tools that already exist, just shifting around where that data is coming from. Uh, and then the goal is for that to go into the public domain once it's approved. So this is this is the prototype and the stage of the workflow that we're really focusing on, on in the moment, um, trying to make sure that we can do this entirely within the public domain. Now, I know a lot of you here are probably more interested in this component, which is how does this data go back into OSM? And that is a really critical step for us. And we are, that's the next phase that we're going to be focusing on. So we have ideas and we have people that we are bringing into the room that are experienced with conflation and with these tools are gonna help us work out the best way to do that. Um, but really just focusing on that prototype first. So the roadmap for us, like I said, we're working on this prototype development. I really should say Jim and Quincy are working on this prototype more than me. Um, and then also once we have that done, um, bringing together both um, volunteers that have been working in the federal crowdsourcing space as well as OSM volunteers um, to do small user testing of this with that tunnel mapping pilot in Colorado. And then after that, bringing in that OSM conflation workflow testing um, and then finally, you know, Maggie alluded to this, but we have a lot of data sets that people are interested in going through this process. We want to make this right with this pilot, um, but once that's done, we're going to start working with those agencies to get their data requests in and into the workflow. And tomorrow I'm going to be talking about um, kind of an initiative that this really speaks to is um, U.S. Trails. So uh, I'll just give a preview, but a lot of the apps that people use to go hiking these days are privately managed. And the data that's going into OpenStreetMap is definitely going directly into these apps now. And, you know, Guy and All Trails and Strava are directly using OpenStreetMap data for their hiking apps. So on public lands, like the National Park Service, they might have their data set that says it's an authoritative trail, but in OpenStreetMap, it might be a social trail and it's leading people to dangerous places. So using something like this, we can actually compare the data sets and fill those gaps and, and identify where authoritative trails will be. So I'll be talking about that more tomorrow and we'd love to hear your input, especially if you've solved this problem other places. So are we done? I just have the thank you slide. So we're basically done. Um, so thank you everyone. Um, we, the GitHub um, and Slack links are there. Um, so thank you for this. I will say for questions, um, Jim couldn't make it to say the map, but he's online. So if you have questions about the technical workflow and that side of things, um, he's going to be answering those questions in venue list. So um, if you're here, we can redirect um, to the app, or if you can just type it, that would be great too. But um, Maggie and I can handle more of the, the government relations and those kind of questions for sure. Thank you, Jess and Maggie, for that talk. There's one online question that probably I should be answering. <laughs> Someone is asking, what options uh, are there for OSM contributors who want to allow their contributions to be available for the public domain without double mapping? And the answer to that is there are no options. If you contribute anything to OSM, then it is ODBL. You can give the data to someone else from your local machine. But other than that, there used to be a public domain flag in OSM when you sign up, but it has long been, um, uh, long been deemed unsuitable to express any such desire. So no one is going to be able to use the contributions you make to OSM in public domain. Uh, there are no other online questions, but maybe here in the room. <laughs> Makes our job easier. <laughs> um, how do you deal with government and OSM having um, more often than not completely different mapping guidelines. For example, we work with verifiability um, on the ground truth, uh, but governments may work with something completely different and map based on that. How do you um, merge the, the data? How do you deal with that? 
This is a good question. And it's, I've never heard the word standards more in my entire life than in the past year. <laughs> so, you know, they're like, what are the standards of OpenStreetMap? And I'm like, well, we, we don't use that language. It's more of a schema. But um, I think one of the things that people are noticing is that actually we do a really good job with our tags and our schema. Um, and I've seen this, this culture shift happen um, with how the, at least the US federal government, and, and are we still recording, <laughs> um, is, is thinking about the crowd. I mean, five years ago, I remember having a conversation with the US Census about, hey, you know, we're, we're fixing all these roads in, in Tiger in OpenStreetMap. And you should see, like, there's all these errors. And wouldn't it be great if you get that data back? And they looked at me like, this lady's crazy. Uh, I had that same conversation a year ago, and I'm like, well, you know, what 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 can we do from our side to to align and maybe create some more interoperability between the two? So, you know, even just translating, like, you may call it this, but we call it this. But here's really what it is. Um, it it's a very slow conversation, um, and I think it's it differs for every data set that you look at. But what I'm finding, at least from this this initial pilot, is that there's more overlap than you might think. Thanks for the question. Um, uh, yeah, what, what I'm concerned with a little bit is, is, is sort of similar to the question before, um, but it, a slightly different direction. OpenStreetMap has a very different thinking about its data than most other people who work with uh, um, GIS data. They, they think in layers and they have this data set and this data set and this data set. And OpenStreetMap has this one integrated thing and a mapper is not only somebody um, who uh, finds the tunnels uh, of a railway and um, but, but but notices oh there's something else missing while I'm doing this I'll, I'll do this other thing and um, I'm a bit concerned that um, your approach uh, will um, sort of infect us with this uh, only we have we've all these separate layers and they're not uh, and 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 then that they'll not integrate it properly into into a, a whole thing and uh, I wonder if you've thought about that and and how you would address that. Yeah, no, that's definitely a concern of ours as well. And that's part of the thought process is how do we create a stream that is using all these efforts at once, but also not creating any splintering. Um, and so, I mean, as far as getting the data back into OSM, that's that's gonna, that's our next step, like I said. But as far as um, the upstream of where those users are mapping, because they're only working on the federal data sets that are there, they're only editing like the railroad lines, and that's all that's available with the presets as well. But that controls that. So we are thinking through um, the controls, and it's also why we're doing a lot of user testing. Um, and if you have um, any input on the kind of user testing that you would like to see, um, please come find me afterwards, because um, we're outlining that as well. Um, but we want to make sure that we're um, we're doing this as cleanly as possible and as efficient as possible, too. But yeah, and, and the way you do it, I mean, in the task manager, you can set the preset so people can only map the railroad tunnels within that task. So that is a nice control. Um, so you're not adding buildings while you're mapping tunnels. Last, whoever added that. <laughs> last question uh, online. Um, before I have, I have two more small announcements before you all go. Um, but one question online: um, um, Have you have you done any, or ha have you helped government agencies doing any comparisons between their own data and OSM data, maybe to find gaps in their or our data? That's something on your radar within this project. Absolutely, and I think that's why there's 60 people now in the working group because. Um, their self-identifying gaps and places where OpenStreetMap data is just amazing. And a lot of it is in our detail. You know, I mean, it's, it's all that that local mapping, the local knowledge. And um, I mean, like I said, the, the Trails Talk tomorrow is going to talk a little bit more about that. But I, I think it was alluded to that, you know, most of the data that is, comes from a cycleway or, or a trail is, is added by individual, map, individual mappers paying attention to the details. And um, the government agencies are really noticing that. And in the government sense, it would take them about a couple of years to update that local data. And in OpenStreetMap, it happens pretty quickly. Thank you again, Jess and Maggie, for that interesting talk.